Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today I thought we'd take a look at this. What we've got here is we've got the um, amplifier out of that um, Dan Set uh, record player I picked up at the car boot sale. Um, I, th I actually know what m uh, model it is now. Um, it is a uh, Dan Set Auto Mix from um, 1956 I believe. And if you watch my uh, previous video, um, I was told it wasn't working the record player when I bought it. But that can mean lots of different things. It can mean that the mechanism's jammed up. It could mean that the cartridge was just bad. But in this instance, um, the amplifier seems completely dead in it. And uh, I wasn't actually really intending on doing a video on the, that record player. But um, I started cleaning it up today. And... Um, Actually, the cabinet is cleaning up really, really nicely on it, far better than I was expecting it to. And as part of that, obviously, I pulled the um, amplifier chassis out. And this is basically it. This is the complete um, amplifier from the um, Dancer Auto Mix. And it's, it is incredibly simple. So what I thought we'd do is um, we'd go through um, fault finding on this, um, diagnose what's actually wrong with it. Um, get it running again and um, we'll do some basic um, maintenance on it as well a bit of a service there's, there's virtually nothing that really needs changing on these bar possibly some um, electrolytic capacitors if indeed they do need changing because there's a chance they might still actually be absolutely fine in this um, I haven't even got the circuit diagram for it here no I don't know how well that's coming out on camera, um, but this is, this is your stereotypical um, Dan set one valve wonder circuit. Uh, it's somewhat better than most um, single valve amplifier circuits used by a lot of manufacturers in the actual fact it contains the mains transformer. Um, a lot don't, a lot just use a tapping on the um, motor winding to feed the filaments of the um, valve and then just rectify the mains coming in and that's basically what feeds the um, valve. Dan set did actually go one up from that and they did use a proper mains transformer uh, which provides through a solid state rectifier um, which basically drives the valve direct. It's, it's very 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 simple, we've got a couple of smoothing capacitors there. Um, We've got another electrolytic capacitor there. Uh, those three are all in the same can. Uh, that's that uh, big can down there. Um, essentially, uh, I mean that's just cathode bypass that one. Um, apart from that there is only one other capacitor in the entire um, amplifier and that's um, this one here. It's a um, 0 0.05 and um, it's just used in the tone circuit. Um, if that was to short, um, it wouldn't stop the, um, it wouldn't damage anything in here. There is no um, grid decoupling capacitor or anything like that in this circuit because the simple fact is the grid of the output valve there is being driven straight off the pickup cartridge. Um, it's a high output pickup cartridge. Now, uh, Andy did say it's the brown um, medium output output cartridge that this circuit uses and I'm not sure what um, output that gives but um, I know that the orange ones um, it's like two and a half three volts they're quite hot and um, basically it, it drives through the volume control there straight into the um, UL41 output valve into the grid of the output pento there um, so you don't need a capacitor on there because there is no way for DC to uh, be feeding into that grid it's pure the AC coming off the pickup cartridge there that's um, basically driving the valve it is really is that simple this amplifier um, one thing about it is it should be super super clean um, you've nothing really in there to create any distortion because you, you literally are just got the uh, pickup cartridge there with its uh, high output just going straight into the valve. Like I said, there's no preamp stage, there's nothing like that, there's no filtering or anything, it's just banging it straight in there. That's amplifying it and it's going out the output transformer and out the speaker. It, like I said, we've got um, one of the other grids there is what's connected to the um, tone correction circuit. Sorry, it's the um, cathode, sorry, it's connected to the um, 
no, it's not the cathode, it's the anode, isn't it? Yeah, sorry, the anode is connected to the um, tone correction circuit there through that um, capacitor. So I suppose potentially, yeah, that might have a little bit of voltage on it, um, but we'll get to that anyway because we're going to um, we'll be changing that out. But anyway, first things first, we need to find out why this amplifier is not amplifying because at the moment, like I said, it is completely dead. Um, the valve is lighting but that is all we're getting them out of it. Now there's some really simple basic checks we can do um, before we even have to start um, applying voltages to this and um, testing from um, from there, which obviously you're, you, you're going to have more risk when you've got mains on this thing. But there are some simple basic checks that we can do um, just to ascertain some simple things are, um, are not the problem. Um, Two of the things it could simply be, um, being that, like I said, it could be the valve itself, but I, I very much doubt it is actually the valve. Uh, valve very rarely fail completely. Um, the valve could be flashing over, in which case we'd see a bit of a fireworks display inside it, and you'd probably even still hear pops and crackles coming from the speaker as that's happening. We're not getting that. Um, we could have, even have a faulty speaker. We could have a faulty output transformer. Um, in the output side of it that's really the first things we want to check because we can check the speaker and we can check the output transformer without actually applying any mains voltage to this thing and we can do that with something as simple as a, a 9 volt battery so if I take this and I just touch it very gently we don't want to hold it on there we just want to brush it against the contacts for the speaker and if we listen there we go don't want to do it too much but as you heard then we got um, some nice crackles out of the speaker so the speaker is at least functioning to some extent next thing we want to try is we can actually do the same thing with the output transformer and if we put a low voltage DC into the primary of the output transformer there if the primary and the secondary are at least not open circuit and not completely shorted uh, it doesn't say that the output transformer is working perfectly, but it at least tell us that we should at least get some audio through the output transformer. So, if I touch this onto the primary of the um, output transformer. There we go. We're getting clicks out of the speaker, so we've proved that basically the speaker is at least functioning to some extent, and the output transformer is at least functioning to some extent. So. We can rule, rule those out for the, for the moment. The, I'm not saying that they're not faulty, but we can rule them out for them being absolutely no sound whatsoever. Right, so what we're left with, okay, we're still left with the valve, but that is the thing that I would suspect the least at the moment. Uh, we could have a problem with the uh, mains transformer there. We know that the low voltage winding on it is working because the valve's lighting up and the um, we're getting a indicator bulb behind it there that's also lighting up um, so because I believe there's going to be two um, low voltage windings on this a 40 volt winding for the filament of the valve and a 6, six volt winding for the filament of the um, pilot light there and in fact if we look on the circuit diagram again hopefully this you can see this because I don't know whether it's really coming out that well on camera I think it's coming out reasonable I'll turn it that way so you can actually see it because I just remember which way I've got my camera orientated I'm just trying my camera in a slightly different place as well today um, right so yeah we've got basically the filament of the valve is on this part of the transformer here there and that um, will be a 40 volt tapping for the um, filament. We've also then got a small tapping here, if you look there, and that's a 6 volt tapping for the um, pilot light there. Th both that part of the circuit there is working, but we could still have, yeah, possibly we could have like a fault on the other side of the circuit, which is the high tension side. Uh, which would stop us getting any um, AC, high, high voltage AC through to the um, rectifier. Um, we could also have a bad rectifier to be honest. Um, if that is not working we're not going to be passing DC, uh, we could be, have AC on that wire there 
but if that's not working we're not going to be getting DC up to the main smoothing capacitor and onto the um, valve there so that could be an issue um, really what the only thing we can do now is um, put some volts to this thing um, power it up and test we'll see if we've got some AC there and we will see if we've got some DC there and um, if we've got AC and DC there um, Really, the only thing it could possibly be is a, is a bad valve. Um, because, like I said, we've got AC coming out of there, so we've got AC on there. We know the transformer's good. And if we've got DC coming out onto there, we know that the rectifier there is good. Um, the capacitor could still be completely, could be bad, but really, all, unless it's completely shorted out, uh, really all that will do is create hum coming out of the speaker, we'll just get the mains hum coming out of the speaker. Um, right, I will get my meter in shot, and we'll get this set to um, 600 volts AC. Now, one thing with the circuit diagram, actually, it does give us some um, voltage checkpoints, but they're all on the DC side, there's none on the AC side, so I don't know what the AC voltage coming into the rectifier here is going to be. But we know what it is coming out of the uh, rectifier here, going into that smoothing capacitor A. And that's 130 volts, which is actually really, really low for um, the valve. But, um, yeah, so we've got, should have 130 volts DC there. So I suspect uh, it'll be slightly lower, perhaps 120 or so um, AC on that side. And then that gets rectified down and obviously smoothed and everything. So um, that's set to 600 volts that's fine we can connect uh, one side of the probe to um, the chassis because the chassis is ground on this and we can um, basically then probe that wire there and see if we've got um, AC coming out of the transformer there I've got the uh, I'll have the lamp limiter still in circuit uh, we can switch it in and out if we need it but it's um, just in case something shorts out um, at least uh, we're current limited for the moment and I'll obviously I'll connect the wiring up with uh, my safe block uh, this wiring is just temporary while we are working on it um, when the record player does go back together um, this obviously will be being changed for three core uh, mains lead with an earth uh, it's just I've actually completely run out um, I'm waiting for a delivery of um, some mains lead because uh, I used my last piece the other day but um, for testing this will be absolutely fine. So I'll get that connected up to the um, safe block. Get the safe block um, down like that. We've got that switched on. I've not plugged the safe block in. Well, let's make sure that the actual um, amplifier is switched on. Yeah, the amplifier is on now so that's fine. Otherwise, obviously, we're not going to get any power through to the um, rectifier. We'll switch it off there. We'll plug in. So that's my safe block. Well, my um, lamp limiter is energized, and the safe block's plug safe block is plugged into it. Um, to be ultimately safe, what we could do is actually just connect this wire there, and then as we're actually switching on, we're not we're actually like touching the circuit at all. So. I mean, I've been doing this for a very, very, very long time. Um, there's some techniques that I will use that obviously I don't recommend to other people. If you're a beginner and you're just getting into this, this kind of setup where you connect to it and then switch on is probably your best and your safest way of doing it. Right, so we'll switch on and we'll have a look on here and see if we're getting um, an AC voltage on the meter. So switch on. And, yeah climbing up there a bit but uh, yeah we get about 133 volts there on that um, AC line into the um, rectifier but I can just probably just very quickly switch out the um, that's full AC mains on it and we, yeah about 130 what's that about 136 volts I'll switch that back in and I'll turn off Right, so we know that the mains transformer is actually okay, that's fine. So that really only leaves the rectifier there, or the actual valve itself. 
So we will um, go over onto um, DC volts. We're set up at 600 there. We're going to be nowhere near there. We could probably use the 200 range setting, but just to be on the safe side, we'll stay up at 600. Uh, we'll take this wire off that connector there. And I'm going to connect it to the um, output from the rectifier, which is that connection. Down there. It's only a half wave rectifier, this, so it is literally only going to. Um, it is basically just like one diode. It's not a full bridge rectifier. Right, let's make sure that that's not shorting anything. It's a decent connection. Let's see if we can get, perhaps get on that um, capacitor there instead because that'll be a better, safer um, connection. There we go. Right, so that's all connected up. We're set onto AC there. Uh, sorry, we're set onto DC there on the meter. So I will switch on again now. Um, and we'll see if we get any um, DC coming up on there. If we get, um, what's it telling us, we should be having 130 volts. So we want to be looking to be getting around about 130 volts showing on there. So let's switch on. And we are getting absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. Hmm. So I'll switch off again. So it looks like we may ha well have our. Um, we may very, very well have our sub suspect. And that is that rectifier there. That little old selenium rectifier there. So let's pop that off the board and we'll try and test it out of circuit. And just cut these wires. Just cut that. So that's our AC into the rectifier. And that there will be our DC into the smoothing capacitor there. So um, when we take this off the board, I'll uh, remove that. I just want to take this out for now. And we get the uh, test leads. We do have a diode check function on this meter. So we'll go across to that. And I'll connect up to the uh, rectifier. And we've got nothing that way. Obviously, it shouldn't conduct one way, and it should conduct the other. But there should be some forward voltage drop. So there should be some drop, and there should be some, should be some leakage. And we've got absolutely nothing there. Uh, basically, that is open circuit. So that's looks like that's our problem. Um, we have a bad selenium rectifier there. What we can do? We'll get rid of that. Is we can replace it. With one of them. Now that is a um, 1N, what is it now? It's a 1N4007, which is basically a um, 1000 volt rated uh, 1 amp um, diode. Uh, 1 amp is more than enough for this because it's on the HT circuit of this um, amplifier. It's, it's seeing a few hundred milliamps maybe. Um, it's not going to see a lot of current. So that will basically do as a um, as a replacement, but the problem is that the efficiency of that is magnitudes better than the efficiency of that. And if we just put that in there, the HT is going to be much, much, much higher than it was previous to um, when we was using that old selenium rectifier. So what we'll have to do is. Um, 
basically add a, um, a limiting resistor uh, before it goes into the um, first capacitor. So if you look here on the circuit diagram, at the moment we've got the um, diode there and it goes straight from the diode into that first capacitor that we then have a, um, a limiting resistor there as it goes into its second capacitor and then it goes off onto the um, valve. Now, what we need to do basically is put another resistor between them two there just to drop off that excess voltage a little bit there because we're using a much more efficient rectif rectification device than um, Danset did back in um, 1956. I'm sure if they had those in 1956, that's what they would have used. Right, so um, a little bit of exper experimentation is going to have to be done just to ascertain what exact value we want for that. I've got a couple of, well, I've got a pile of um, likely wire round, wound resistors here. So I'm going to pick one that I think is probably going to be about right. Probably a bit hot. Um, let's try one of these. We need something with a couple of watt basically um, rating. What are these? I think these are like three watts or something like that. Two or three watts, that should be absolutely fine. Um, we're just going to lash this up for now. So we want to solder that basically onto there, solder that onto there, and connect it to there. And we want to see basically just measure on there and see what our voltage output is and we want to get it around about 130 volts DC. So get that off. I'll turn that up. Turn up the, uh, the right side of the diode. I'm going to leave all the wires nice and long for now because um, obviously we're going to want to mount this properly once we've ascertained what value resistor we want. It's going to be somewhere around about, um, I'd say one to three hundred ohms is usually what I've found works uh, when I've had to do this in the past. But this also, you know, I've, there's not an exact science, I'm sure there's ways you could calculate it properly, but I've always found, you know, start with something around the 150 ohms, 200 ohms ish. Um, see where you are and go up or down from there. Right, okay, that'll do. Um, obviously, we won't be leaving it like this, but um, this is just for testing. Tack that onto the original lead like that. There we go. Okay, that'll do. So we've got our um, limiting resistor in there. Can you actually see what I'm showing you here? Let me see if I can get you down a little bit so you can actually see what I'm uh, what I'm trying to show you. Because I think that the lights are probably reflecting a bit too much. Right, let's drop that down a little bit. Right, let me try knocking that light off. Right, is that better? Right, so basically what we've got is we've got the wire coming off the um, mains transformer there. We've got our um, diode dropper there. So we've got, we've got our diode rectifier there. Then we've got our um, dropping resistor there going into the wire that had come out of the original selenium rectifier there. So what we'll do is we'll connect back up, go to chassis ground there, and we'll connect this wire back on like that. So basically we're going to measure what voltage we've got going into that um, capacitor there. We've got the meter all set up, you can see that okay. 
um, so we're pretty much set there we'll switch on we've got the still got the lamp in series so if there's anything wrong the lamp will light so we'll switch on and we'll see if we get any um, see what voltage we get on there so switch on hmm switch off because we weren't getting any voltage there. I might have been stupid and put that um, that diode in the wrong way around. I should have put that in the right way around. Just bear with me a second folks, I think I've just done something silly and put the diode in the wrong way around. Right, apologies about that guys, idiot mode. Um, no, I got this exactly as I wanted it, it was perfectly set up right, um, the diode was in the right way. What was wrong was I got the meter still set to diode test, not to um, voltage test. Oh dear, dear me. Right, uh, let's carry on with this. So I've got it all connected um, back up. Um, so we'll power back up and we should see um, a voltage appear on here. Um, so if we switch on. And we've got 150, 5, 6, 7, 9, 160, 162, starting to drop back down. And we have a working speaker. And we've dropped down to about 118 volts there. It's asking us for 130 volts. Let's see what this actually stabilises at. That's well within the tolerance of the um, capacitor. That's not a major issue. Yeah, we seem to have, we seem to have stayed. In fact, we're still actually running on reduced um, input voltage at the moment because I've still got the lamp limiter switched in. So if I switch the lamp limiter out now, let us see what that actually um, increases up to. And it basically we want it around about 130 volts. So. I'll switch the um, limiter out of circuit and what have we got there we've got 122 volts I am more than happy with that that's close enough all right we'll just switch off for a second we'll see that voltage just collapse away there so yeah that's really all that was wrong with this thing um, we had a um, a bad selenium rectifier so um, what we'll do in fact, let's see if we've got any um, I can see if we've got any output there on the um, these are basically the wires from the pickup so if we um, touch that there we should be able to get to, um, see if we've actually got the amplifier working let's switch back on again see the voltage come up then it should drop off again there we go. yeah I ground out that that is not a terrible amount of hum for one of these amplifiers um, they are not A silent amplifier by the simple fact that you've only got half wave um, rectification so what we'll do is we'll um, put basically do this neatly because um, I'm actually quite happy with that that's um, absolutely fine that's what did I use resistor wise I think that's a 300 um, 300 ohm resistor that I used there so on the, I could have probably got away with slightly less and brought that HT up a little bit but uh, to be honest I, I think that's probably close enough to what it should be um, 122 and it's saying 130 so yeah I'm, I'm reasonably happy with that that's, uh, that's not going to be too bad right so we've um, seen that all the voltage has bled off there um, we'll disconnect the safe block I'll just disconnect my wiring so I disconnect my meter to take that out of the way. Let's 
disconnect that from the safe block so I can pull that wire in around here. So I've got a tangle of wires at the moment. Right. Now what we're going to do we'll have to obviously like I say we'll have to make this so it's neat. At the moment I'm not actually going to change the main electrolytic there because I don't think it needs it. I think that's actually probably okay. Um, some people just change them on site. I don't necessarily do that to be honest. If they uh, seem to be um, operating okay I tend to leave them leave them alone. I will pull the um, output valve out very gently because these are getting quite um, quite expensive now and that one has got no hours on it at all generally speaking on these valves when they're high hours you see deposits starting to form on the sides of the valves here uh, the getter can start changing colour and going more like a silvery browny colour rather than that nice shiny black I can tell straight away just looking at that, that like I said, that has got virtually no hours on it at all. I mean, it's not a brand new valve by any way, but um, it's um, certainly a very low hours UL41 um, that. Take these screws out because I need to take that little uh, nub in there. Obviously, we don't need that on anymore. free from the board right let's get the amplifier over and that there really is the only other capacitor we've got in there like I said that is on the tone circuit and we will change that out it's currently connected to a little tag there actually on the side of the transformer but it just needs to go to chassis, so let's get it off there. There we go. I'll take that out. And what we, we did say that's a um, 0.05 at 350 volts. Oops, you can't see what I'm showing you there, can you? Has the camera slowly dropped down over time? Let's give that a little tweak. Oops, no, not there, there. That's better. Right, don't you move. Right, so there we go. So we've got a um, 0 0.05 um, capacitor at um, 350 volts. We will change that. That's a um, 0 0.047, which is the modern equivalent, and that's rated at um, 630 volts. So um, it's plenty for this. That's that screw that we wanted to take out, so we'll get that out of harm's way. Let's see if there's somewhere where we can easily... It's a shame that they, they use the tag on that side of the um, transformer for um, for mounting that. If they have used something around there it would have made uh, my life a lot easier. But what I think we'll have to do is take the new capacitor. We're going to have to extend the wire all the way over to that point there which is a bit of a pain. Unless I could do something, what well, I could potentially do actually, and I've seen um, some um, done like this is just solder it to the back of the um, potentiometer there because that's ground, that's connected to ground. Um, I might actually do that. What I'm going to do first though, get some uh, some cleaner, and we'll get some cleaner. I've got 
very little of this left. There we go. Just give that a bit of a, that's freed up straight away. There we go. That's cleaned up nicely. And the volume control itself looks like it's a little bit more um, going to be harder to get into, but We'll see how crackly that is when we actually um, start on the record player. We may actually have to drill a hole in that and um, squirt some in, but we won't do that just yet. Let's get this tone correction capacity changed. We'll just try that technique, see if I can do it on here, because it will make it a lot neater. We'll give the back of the pot a bit of a scrape up like that Get some solder Some sold to take to that. I might use slightly hotter iron to do this actually. Now that doesn't seem to be working. It might do. Just bear with me a second, chaps. I'll just get some more flux and what I've been. See if we can just tin up a little bit of that, um, the top of that potentiometer. So back in a sec. Yeah, I, sim I simply hadn't cleaned the um, scrape the metal clean enough in there. If you can see, I've now got a nice bead of solder, well adhered to the top of that potentiometer. So what I can do, I'm going to take the, uh, the capacitor and we'll drop. I can see what I'm doing. Get that leg opened up there so we can put that through there. Just clear the solder from that, uh, that point there. Oops. Go on, through you go. There we go. it around basically what I want to do is solder that leg of that capacitor to that point there where I've just cleaned it should go straight on oops let's get that down while I get this soldered in place Soldered down there, we'll bring that leg around. Bend that round like that. We'll solder that point there. I'll get some more solder so I don't burn my fingers. Basically the same as that capacitor that ran all the way along the back there. 
it's just I think that's a little bit neater and it grounds it's just using the shell of the um, tone pot there as it's ground I've seen lots of other record players do exactly that uh, what it does mean is we've got a really nice riveted fix um, grounding lug there which we can use for the earth for the chassis so that's a win-win so we've got that capacity change there we've taken that bit of um, dross out from in there so about that old screw let's get this um, sat back down roughly where it should go Nope, that's not it. There it is. Right. So that's basically where. It, let's put some screws back in it just to hold it. Because I don't want to keep flexing the uh, wires to the speaker and whatever else. We're only be uh, soldering all them back on. that one in and that is that one in there so at least that's mounted back where it should go so right let's turn our attention to this um, this mess here obviously we know it works we've had um, audio out of the amplifier I'm happy with the voltages but we can't leave it looking like that like, you know looking like that that's uh, not going to be acceptable right so um i'll just disconnect this though um, how we've all got this all connected up for now so let's just take that off there take that off there right so first thing i'm thinking is do i just get rid of that wire there and we basically t take the diode straight off down Put the resistor and then go to that um, tag there or do we in fact what i think i'll do we'll get rid of that wire that is currently there we'll take our uh, resistor connection and solder that into place oops it's not quite soldered into place yet there we go with that and cut that excess off there because we don't need that oh oh I've bent it round I've not actually soldered it to the bloody tag let me go back in there again I managed to solder it onto itself but not actually get the solder to join with the um, tag underneath there we go I'll just hold that for a sec there that's better right, so that's our uh, limiting resistor there we want to connect our um, diode next so we can cut most of that leg off we don't need it make a little eye in the end of this um, use a little bit of solder 
hold that there, bend the leg round the bit of solder a couple of times, pull the bit of solder out, and there we go, that's what we were looking for, we can trim off that bit, we'll slip that over there like that, Give it a little, oops. Bear with me a second, folks. I crimped that before I got it round the thing, so. I've uh, the things that happen when you try to film. Right, let's try that again. I'm going to have to do that again. Alright, roll that one up. Let's get that leg straight again. Okay. I'll take a little scrap of something to wrap that round. Like that. Right, there we go. I've got our little coil again. Bend that up. Slip that over there. Squash the wire down. There, that's what we wanted it to do. So it holds up like that. Right. Well, then add some solder. to do basically is take that wire solder that wire to the top of there like that and that is our replacement for the uh, for the selenium rectifier there and that shouldn't touch anything or go anywhere it's going to be re you know it's going to be secure enough because there's basically there's no weight in it so we will chop off In fact, what I might do is just take a piece of heat shrink. What have we got in here? Yeah, red would be appropriate. Took a little piece of red, red heat shrink here. Cut a piece off. Feed that over the top. Solder that in place. Tin that up a little bit on that leg there. I'm just give my iron a clean as well because that's looking manky. There we go. We can solder that. solid connection there and we'll put a bit of heat shrink down if I can even get it over now that resistor potentially might get a little bit warm but it's not going to get mega hot right and we'll just shrink that down a little bit of hot air It's not going to short on anything now. There we go. All 
and that's really mostly what is what's to these amplifiers they really are that simple and usually that simple to um, repair sometimes you're going to have to change the um, electrolytic smoother there but you don't need a can type like that you can just use three normal uh, what's the values uh, we've got a 16 uh, microfarad, a 32 microfarad and a 50 microfarad and that's a low voltage one, a 50 volt would do for that uh, these want to be rated um, I'd say 350 volts but you probably get away with slightly less than that um, because there is not a lot of um, high tension on this, it's quite low really for what it is Right, um, let's give it a, uh, let's give it, let me get you zoomed out a little bit, so you can, at least you can see a bit more of what's going on. Right, let us um, give it another test. What I'm going to do, let's put the valve back in or else we're not going to get much audio out of it, are we? There we go. It's stood up like... Get it some into a position where I can actually operate the controls on it. I might just stand it back up there. That's not too bad. You can at least see it like that, right? And we've got the audio here. And what I want to do is get away that I can get this audio, well, so like this input here, and um, connect it to my laptop. Now. Technically, we could connect it, connect it straight into the laptop, and it would work. The thing is, if anything goes wrong in that valve, and that valve was to say flash over, uh, there's a potential of quite a high voltage flying up them wires. Now, in its original application, all you had was a crystal pickup cartridge on the end of there, and the most you're going to do is bugger up that cartridge. Um, if that valve was to flash over and I've got it connected up to the laptop um, there's a good chance it could fry the sound card in my uh, laptop. So what I usually do when I want to connect something like this up to uh, a modern audio source that I don't really want to damage is just use a little one-to-one -one isolation transformer uh, like that. So that's what I'm going to do. We'll uh, connect these wires up just bodge these up. Just hoping there'd be enough solder on there for it just to stick, but never mind. Let's uh, add a little bit more Some solder on there. Some solder on there. We should be able to get these to. So this, I'll probably even end up changing this wire on the um, amplifier for one, a screened one, when the um, record player goes back together. But um, just for messing about, just for proving the amplifier, that'll be fine. Do they connect? Yeah, they're, they're janky connections, but they'll do absolutely fine for what we're just doing now. So basically we've got a 3.5 inch jack there, 3.5 mil jack, sorry. 3.5 inch jack, but yeah, that'll be a big one. Um, Right, I will connect, let's get the um, older computer fired back up as well, and I'll connect back up to the safe block. And we'll switch on the amplifier, as you can see the power is lit up here. Should. Anything there? Uh, I think that volume control probably will need changing. getting a little bit of audio out of there. In fact it actually might be too low impedance this. Let's just try disconnecting that. Switch off. Let's just see if we're getting anything. 
yeah. And just loading it down a bit. Let us say though, if I plug this into the laptop. Play, uh, I've got some um, royalty free jazz tracks here. Oh, no, no, not that one. Just bear with me a second. There we go, we've got um, relaxing jag jazz music. As always, when I use royalty free music, I'll stick a um, link to what I'm using down in the uh, description. Playing. Right, that's playing. Um, are we going to get anything if I connect these together? Yep. Now it's going to be very, very quiet, but. Just solder these wires back together. Bear with me a second folks, I'm going to burn my fingers here now. There we go, that's better. Right. Switch the amplifier back on. We should be getting some music through. There we go. Actually, more volume than I was expecting to get. Just have a quick play with the computer, see if we can get any more out of it. But, oh yes, we can. There we go. Actually, that's not bad at all. That's full volume, but... Tone works. Yep, tone works. Uh, just bear with me a second, perhaps. I've just noticed my battery is about to die any second. Just let me change my battery. Sorry about that, folks. Um, battery change, but even while that, I've been leaving it playing and it's playing really nice. So we go up a bit with the volume. And actually, that volume seems fine. No crackling. So the tone, the tone does work. So yeah, all that was really wrong with the amplifier was that um, old selenium rectifier had finally given up the ghost. It would have worked probably absolutely fine. In fact, I just remember we actually were still running on reduced power there. Let me switch the lamp limiter out of circuit. That'll just give us a little bit more HT. That actually brought the volume up really that much, so it's not that critical. But it would have probably still worked even with that old capacitor in there. Um, I've changed it just for a peace of mind, really. The main smoothing electrolytics, though, and I think they probably are original from it, as you can hear. I've turned the volume. Well, if I, let me stop the computer from playing. There is no hum. That's the volume cranked all the way up. There is literally no hum. Tiny little bit. There's a little bit of crackle there, but that's with no signal up it. There is no hum there at all. Start the hum. I turn down. Yeah, it is really actually. Quite, there is perhaps I might have to either spray or change that volume control, but. That is sounding really, really nice. 
these speakers always do sound good. But uh, yeah, I'm super pleased with that. So um, I will get on and I will get the rest of the... Uh, let me turn this down or you're not going to hear me. I can turn it off there. Yes, that definitely works. So let me unplug that for safety. So yeah, I'm super, super... Oops. Let's shut it off on the laptop. So yeah, I'm super pleased with that. That was a nice, easy, um, nice, easy repair on this amplifier. Um, there are other things that we could do with it. This wire here is starting to degrade a little bit. I'll probably change that and put a new wire on just because it is starting to ooze green gunge from that end over there. So that'll change. Obviously, the mains cable is being swapped out for a new one. And probably while I do that, I'll drill a little hole in the um, volume pot and give it a quick shot. <coughs> do need to get some more um, cleaner, for, some more um, contact clearer switch cleaner for doing that because what I've got is virtually empty now. Um, but yeah, um, that needs a quick um, clean up and shot. Like I said, new mains cable on it. Um, change that wire out, and basically that's it. Then this is ready to go back in the um, record player. I've just got the turntable to give a basic service to and see if the actual cartridge um, works. I doubt I'm going to do a video on that. Like I, said, I weren't even planning on really doing a video on this, but seeing I had it out on the bench, I thought I'll switch the camera on and uh, just show you guys um, basic fault finder on a very, very simple um, amplifier such as this. And like I said, it's usually something like rectifier we could have got really unlucky and it'd be like the um, transformer there but those are easy enough to find a replacement for um, obviously the valve is absolutely a1 again um, not a major problem you can still get hold of them but the prices of them have started to go very very high now I just I have a few spares but like I said, I don't even have to delve into my spares for this one anyway I'm going to leave it there for now I hope you enjoyed this little um, video and watch me um, fault um, diagnose and sort this little amplifier out so I will say thanks for watching and goodbye